Yes, welcome to the first episode of Completed It Mate with myself, Kutsky, where each episode I go back and I try and complete some of my favourite arcade games from when I was little, because now I can cheat and put as many credits in as I need. So yeah, first episode we're going back to one of my favourite games of all time, uh, the classic beat em up from 1989, Golden Axe by Sega. I'm actually more familiar with the Sega Mega Drive version of this, the home console port. Um, that was the one that I played to death, to be honest. But I thought we'd do the arcade game this time, because the last level on the Sega Mega Drive version, I'll talk about that a little bit later as we get later into the game, but yeah, that was just like a cheap way of saying we know the arcade game's really short, so we're going to put one last brutal level on it. Just before we get too deep into the game, do want to give a quick reminder to subscribe to the channel. I know it's really annoying when people do that at the front. I always used to wonder why people drilled it into people's heads about subscriptions and liking the video at the start. Basically, if you do it at the end, most people don't make it to the end of YouTube videos. And if you don't do it at all, YouTube don't show the video to anybody. So you would be doing me a solid if you can punch the like video and subscribe to the channel. It's something that I'm trying to grow this year. A little pet project of mine if you're into your retro video games. So anyway, back to Golden Axe. As you can see, we're playing as Gilius Thunderhead on this. Is that his name, the little uh, the dwarf fellow? We can say dwarf, can't we? It's it called him a dwarf in the game. Did anybody by choice play as anybody separately? Obviously, it's a two-player game, isn't it? And you could go as the, the warrior or the Amazon as well. Sorry, I forget the names. But yeah, it was all about the little fella, wasn't it? Whoever could pick him first off the character select screen. I think the Amazon, the lady character on it's actually the best character on the game. I remember reading something, if you look at the character stats, like, you know, behind the scenes, it's weighted in speed, strength, um, how much damage you can take, and magic. And it turns out if you add up the points that they've all got in every different category, that um, she's the best one to play as. But yeah, I mean, the game's called Golden Axe, isn't it? And the little chap's got a golden axe, so you're going to go as him, aren't you? Anyway, we're already up to the first boss on the game, or first bosses, rather. Let's get straight in there with the magic, do as much damage to everybody on the screen as we can. The idea, what you want to do, you might have seen me doing it so far, is to basically split enemies up on this game. Try and get one on either side, as you can see, I'm not doing a great job of it, am I? There we go, try and, uh, try and keep them one on each side, and then just keep doing the charging headbutt like that. And you can take most enemies out pretty effectively with that. If you're looking for expert level gameplay, by the way, you're not going to find it on this channel. I absolutely love video games. I have done my whole life. I've never been particularly good at them. And if anything, I'm getting worse as the years clock up on me. But I enjoy them. So this is more just a nostalgia. Okay, yeah, this is going to bring back memories if you did play the game, isn't it? The little bonus levels where you've got to get the... What are they? Little tiny, like, wizards? Imps? Something like that. They rob all your potions at the end of each round. And you can kick them and get your potions back. Okay, story, moving into the next level. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know the story of Golden Axe, don't you? There's a bad man called Death Adder, did bad things to the land, and uh, you're going to go and sort him out and release the queen and king. So there's a bunch of villagers being terrorised uh, by Death Adder's men, and I'm going to sort them out. Now, you can cheese the game a little bit if you get on the other side of him, yeah, and you can just nudge the enemies off the end. The AI is really quite poor in this game, where you can just, like, lead enemies to walk off the edge. One easy way is just to get past them. Oh. Not like that. Uh, get past them onto the other side and you can charge them off the edge of the screen. So yeah, save, Save's trying to just fight too many of them all in one go. And when you can't do that, if there's um, only two enemies on the screen, again, do what you're doing on the boss before and try and split them up into bunches. It's what I always do. You'll see a lot of the same enemies repeating over and over again in this game, but um, different palette swaps as well. Obviously, it's like as you get further into the game, you get different coloured versions of the same enemies, which basically can just take more hits. I don't even think the AI changes a lot, really. Saying that, though, I think the skeletons do. Right, there's a dragon. We want the dragon. That's the second best dragon, I think. He breathes fire, but you want the pink one that does the fireballs. That's the best one. What you don't want to be doing is letting the enemies get the dragons, because then you're you're going to be in a in a in a bad in a bad way. Ah, these they're hard to get. These ones are hard to get when you're with the dragon, though, because you breathe the fire so far in front of him, he runs around your feet. But I mean, I've got almost full magic anyway, so it's not critical. Come on, let me get it. There we go. There we go. Thing about the second level, I can never remember when to use the magic or not because I don't think there's an end of level boss. We'll try firing it here. I think are these the last lot of them? 
Yeah, because you don't get a distinctive boss, it's just like a big old bunch of enemies. You want to use it on the last bunch of enemies that come on the screen, because they're the hardest. But at the same time, I can never remember. So yeah, I don't know whether I've um, shot my load too early here, as it were. Give me me dragon back. Give me me dragon back. There we go. Ah, uh, yeah, see. Here come these. These are technically the boss of the level. Bosses of the level. Again, split them up. One on either side. Don't let them get the dragon. We should be all right here. Oh. Yeah. They're the skeletons that I was on about. Okay, so there's the first continue that we've used of the game. Obviously, I'm playing this on MAME, so I can just keep pushing the credit button and get as many credits as I need. So just to add a little bit of um, weight and consequences to playing the game, what I'm going to do is every time I use a continue on this series, I'm going to put a quid in a jar and then give that to a charity, which I haven't 100% decided on yet. Might not sound like a lot, but um, bearing in mind I'm pretty bad at games, quid after quid soon going to mount up and also I'm an unemployed DJ musician at the moment. So something's better than nothing, isn't it? And I was thinking charity wise, uh, me and my missus, we actually go in to help out at a local dog shelter on weekends when we have chance. We used to do it a lot more before we got a pet baby. Uh, that occupies a lot of time. But yeah. I'm thinking next time we go down there, I can take all the quids that we've got in the jar, or technically Polish swatter now, as I live in Poland. Just buy some dog food, dog treats, dog toys and stuff like that, and just take them down there for the shelter, because stuff like that's always appreciated, isn't it? So, Stage five already, it feels like stage three. This is what happens when you're talking, when you're playing. So this is the dragon I was on about, the one that shoots the fireballs. We like him. We like him, he's good. Don't let anybody get the other dragons. I think this was the first game I ever played when you could do something like that, you know, where you could, like, really interact with the environment like that. You know, you can knock an enemy off a dragon and then get on it yourself and use it. I've really got a lot of nostalgia for this game, because I remember it's like I grew up, like many people in the UK, um, playing home computers, like the, the Commodore Amiga, the Atari ST. My dad's always been really into computers and computer games as well, so I was quite lucky in that respect that I got to play with all the latest toys and stuff like that. And I remember once he'd sold the Amiga to one of his friends and bought a Mega Drive, which I didn't know what it was at the time, it sounded cool but it kind of looked a little bit pathetic on the table, you know, com compared to an actual computer that used to be there. It was just this little box with these, like, super expensive cartridges that I couldn't get copied games or friends from. When he got it, it came with Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. This is pre-Sonic the Hedgehog when um, it was the original launch of the Sega Mega Drive. And it was all right, Moonwalker, but my dad said he'd ordered some games from Japan. He'd ordered four games from Japan and he said, oh, you'll see why it's so good, you'll see why it's so good. So we had to wait a little while for them to come. Anyway, when the games did come that he'd ordered, he'd ordered Strider, Eastwatt, Hellfire and Golden Axe in the background. Now, I didn't know Golden Axe in the arcade, so I'm about eight years old, I think, eight or nine years old. You can imagine just going from playing games like Double Dragon on the home computer to playing stuff like this was like a massive, massive, you know, leap. And I really did play this to death. I really did play it to death. This guy, there's another, his mate, yeah, there is his mate behind the door. What I was trying to do is I was trying to like inch one of them out and get at least some hits on before the second one came out. So one of them should die a little bit quicker. Oh, hey, I got lucky there. I got lucky. And again. Not so much that time. There we go, one down. The other shouldn't be too difficult now. Yeah, so that's why I've got so much nostalgia for this game. It doesn't matter how many times I play it, I never get bored of it. Even though it's not not the deepest, richest beat em up by any means. I think with most of this, you know, retro gaming stuff, it's all nostalgia, isn't it? Because I, I play some games that, you know, people really rave about and they say that they're such good games and they're masterpieces, but I never played them back in the day. When I play them now, I find it hard to get into them. Okay, is this another boss now? Is this another boss? It's another one when I never know whether to use the magic. Right, okay, yeah. Um, I can use it now. Try and take out all his little minions first, and then uh, we can wade in on him. The only danger with doing the charging butt with that guy with the sword is if you do the um, the charge too early, he can smack you with the sword because he's got really long reach. So we really need to get rid of that other fella and not get sandwiched between the two of them. Right, okay, come on. Yeah, he should be alright now if it's just him on his own. Ah, uh, that's what I was on about if you jump too early. Okay, so there's another quid in the, in the dog fund. Like I said, we'll be going through a few credits, I think. I'll have to come back at the end of it and work out uh, how many have I used already. One, two, three. I think two, maybe three. 
I'll go back and count it at the end. I won't cheat the system, don't worry. Right, okay. Is it the last level after this one? Can't remember. There's the, yeah, the, the green dudes with the health. There's nothing worse than when you've just used a continue, you beat the boss on the next hit, and then you, you know, you could have got them health, but the health's actually very useful at the moment for me. That's weird. I only just noticed on the arcade version, you can only have three lots of health, like three health blocks. On the Mega Drive version, you could have five, or maybe that was an option that I just always turned it onto the easiest setting. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is... No, they're having this maybe second to last level. Because we haven't done the two red knights yet, have we? Two red knights are before Death Adder. I think this is another level where you can cheese um, a bunch of enemies off the edges of the scenery. The sound effects are really good on this game, aren't they? Like the voices. But I've got to say that the music on it sounds a little bit pony compared to the Mega Drive one. Was the Mega Drive music a little bit beefier? Maybe. We, you know, we all know that, um, that the Sega Mega Drive or Genesis, depending on where in the world you grew up, had an amazing sound chip, didn't it? And it was basically a stripped down version of what was used in the Yamaha DX7 synth, which is why it's got that really gritty, gnarly sound. So yeah, maybe the... Mega Drive version for actually the synth stuff might actually be stronger. It just sounded a lot thicker and richer from my memory. I have to go back and compare them. Right, I remember in a minute you get a load of, um, like I was saying earlier in the game, you get the sprite swaps where you get the same characters but they're just a lot more tougher and annoying. I'm sure you get that with the skeletons. That's the like end of level boss. This is another one when I never know when to use the potion because I can never remember, you know, which is the actual end. Like, you know, I could have used something then. And then, you know, got a few more magics back, but there we go. You'd think after playing it this long that I'd actually remember what happens where, but... Try and kill him before his mates come out. Like I said, that's one of the things that you try. You want to try and not push the screen on too far. Just try and like inch them out one at a time. That's got a lot of personality. This game, hasn't it? Still, I was playing like a new beat 'em up that they'd made. Um, what was it called now? Breakneck City. And it was only, like, the game was sort of like somebody broke a local video shop in town and you're going to stop corruption with the with the mayor. But it's just the way it was written made me think that, you know, we, we'd kind of look back and laugh at the stories on stuff like Golden Axe and Final Fight. But they're a lot better than some of the indie games now. Still, they still stand up a lot better. They feel a lot more fleshed out. One of those things, I guess, they've, like, appreciated well over time. This is the point I don't like when you get three enemies on the screen because I can't do me bouncing on either side. There's another quid in the pot. Just need to get rid of one of them. If one of them dies, we'll be in a better position. Mm. Yeah, that's where you don't want to be. That's where you don't want to be. Ah, just so I got rid of one, another one's popped up. The enemies stay as well, if you notice that. They, like, turn to stone. They didn't do that on the Mega Drive version, did they? the worst. It's it with me, like loads of beat-em-up games. If you get sandwiched between two enemies and keep taking hits, it's the most frustrating thing. It's the one situation you don't want to be in. That's why Final Fight and games like that were really cool. They had the special in here where you could press the attack and jump together and you could do a, a special that like attacked everybody on all sides and you used a little bit of health but it was better than just like losing a whole life bar. Right, so I could have used the magic then. I was thinking there was more enemies after them. There we go, anyway. He's going to rob a couple and I'll rob them back again. The life will actually be useful this time. He could have given me another one. He could have given me another one. Where's your mate? All right. It's as good as we're going to get, I guess. Okay, right. Is this the last level now? Because we're going to the castle. Yeah, this is definitely one bit that you can kind of cheese the game by walking off um, the bottom of the screen earlier, land on the platform, and the enemies will just drop off and die. So I'll try and do that now. And oh, there we go. A little bit too keen, a little bit too keen. That didn't work. Uh, I'll, 
I'll, I'll, yeah, I can still, I'll still be all right here, I think. He says, he says, there we go, one off. Try and get, wait for him, try and run past him in a minute. So, there we go, right, and then a little nudge off there. One more should send him off. I could have just, if I'd have got it right, I could have just walked off the end, landed on that platform, and they'd have walked straight down. So I can get her off the bottom now. There we go. Like, yeah, like that. Like I said, not the smartest AI in the world, but it was an early, it was an early one, wasn't it, for beat em ups. To be careful, I can't remember whether I can run off the bottom of that or not. Here's back to the thing where I don't like having three enemies on the screen at once. I think the two red knights, remember the, the knight, the silver knight that we fought earlier, I think we have to fight two of them in a minute. Another quid in the jar. I wonder if there was a sprite limit, because if you notice that a lot of times there's two, three enemies in me, and as soon as I kill one, another one comes on. So I wonder if it can only have so many sprites on screen at once, but then I wonder how that would work if you, you know, added another player in there. Unless it's like five sprites is the limit. That's interesting. See that attack when I tried to jump him then and he flipped me up in the air? I don't remember that ever on the Sega Mega Drive one. Maybe they, you know, maybe that's an extra move that the red ones have got in the arcade and they couldn't fit it in memory or something with the Mega Drive ones. There just had to be a sprite swap. Or maybe they just very rarely did it. I've never seen that before. Right, okay, so back to the usual plan. One on each side, do the headbutts, um, time it wrong, and get hit by them. Like that. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah, it's like I said, we must already be up, up to about a fiver in the doggy pool. Gotta be one more. One more hit. There we go. There we go. Right. Moving on. Moving on. Saving the magics, because here's the last boss here now. It's quite a short game, really, isn't it? Like I was saying that, um, spoiler alert, once you beat him, you let the um, king and queen down again. On the Sega Mega Drive version, it adds another level where you go in through that door in the background. And there's one last level that's just designed to just use up all your continues. So you play the game and it's just normally difficulty paced and the last level is just absolutely brutal just to make it seem longer, the game, so you couldn't finish it straight away. So the big chap there looks like a WWE steroid wrestler. Easy last boss, Death Adder. I think on the Mega Drive one there was Death Bringer, wasn't there? I really like the music on this one. Again, I think it seemed more dramatic and bigger on the Mega Drive version. If it's not just nostalgia talking. But with a lot of these kind of like old retro games, considering they were working with such limited tool sets for the sound palette, they managed to create like drama and atmosphere with it, didn't they? Like I'd be interested, like did they completely write this from scratch or they were using some kind of like medieval references, like you know, of maybe old films or something? Really well done. It is really well done. I used to love listening, just listening to the music on this game. So I'm not sure how it works, right? Because on the final boss, Deathbringer, I think it was on the Mega Drive, the two skeletons, normally I'd try and get rid of the skeletons first and then focus on the last boss. But on the Mega Drive one, the skeletons have an unbelievable amount of life that you're just wasting your time trying to get rid of them. That's what will bleed you continues dry, so you're better off just going straight for the guy. So I'm trying to ignore the skeletons here because I don't know how it works on the arcade. But then that is the point that they're always kind of getting, getting in a cheeky little hit, aren't they? I can't remember on the Mega Drive version as well as if you used a credit. I can't remember if you got a magic potion back. I don't think you did. That's the advantage of being able to spam your credits, isn't it? On main. Also, it's cool how he can use as much magic as he wants. But again, I'll have to do a playthrough of the Mega Drive version of this so you can see how unfair the, the last battle on the, the Mega Drive one is. Because the guy can use all the magics that any of the player characters can use and he just spams them over and over again and there's nothing you can do about it. 
I wonder if you can kill the skeletons, because that'd be a lot easier, but whenever I commit to it, it's like I've done quite a bit of damage to him so far, haven't I, to, to old Death Adder. Ah, uh, yeah, as long as another one doesn't come back now. That might have been a better strategy, that, to be honest. Kill the skeletons first. But at least I've got two enemies now, so I can get one on either side and try and do me charging headbutt thing. See how that works out. Ah, sandwiched in the middle again. Ooh. So I started with nine credits. We've used them all. Nice getting that magic back every time music continue. Need to remember to use that. Surely we've got to be close now. We've got to be close. Ooh. There we go. There we go. Oh, a little bit of blood as well. I don't remember the blood on the Mega Drive version. Maybe that was like sanitized for the home kids version. So there we go, King and Queen. See that arch in the background? That's a door. So on the Mega Drive version, they added one more level and you go in through the door and it's just, yeah, brutal if you remember that. So there we go. We just finished Golden Axe and the ending is very different. The ending's completely different on the arcade. Check this out. It's really cool. Don't get any of this on the Mega Drive version. Must have been a memory limitation or something, because I really liked it. Breaking the fourth wall that, you know, you're playing the game in the arcade, you finish it, screen breaks, and all the enemies burst out of it. And then comes your heroes. And they chase them off into town. I always really like that. It's a little bit, it's all right on the um, on the Mega Drive version. I think do they just like throw balls of um, letters at you, and then the character hits them, and it smashes the credits up onto the screen. But I just thought this was it. I don't know. It was fun. Fun. I think is the best way to describe it. So there we go, first episode of Completed It, mate. If you've got any other games that you'd like to see me play through, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments, any suggestions. I do like playing through some of these old arcade games, so I'll be doing it anyway. I thought I'd record it and just have a little talk. And we'll put some extra videos up because I'm trying to grow this channel a little bit, just as a little hobby project. Ah, I didn't do great there, ranking D. So yeah, I just wanted to experiment. So far, all I've been doing is game review videos, which are quite time occupying. So I thought it'd be fun to just go through, play some games with this. I've been experimenting, doing the shorts on the channel as well. I don't know whether anything's really going to work, but I do enjoy creating this content. Um, and I guess if you've stuck this late into the video, you don't mind watching it either. So yeah, thank you. Um, I'll be back again soon with some extra content on the channel. Until then, have a good one. This is Kutsky signing out. Keeping the games alive. Catch you soon.